What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Now today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new ASRock X299 Tai Chi motherboard. So this is the board here, very nice looking board, very neutral colors, which I absolutely love. So what we're doing is checking out some of the main features. I'll definitely be covering the VRM temps uh, along here, which has been a very hot topic lately. So what we'll do is we'll jump in and we'll have a look. The ASRock X299 Tai Chi runs with a sleek, all neutral color design, which I absolutely love. Everything just blends in nicely. Being from the Tai Chi series, we have the cold clock design brought over from the previous generations. The main difference in the X299 Tai Chi is the board features this stealth gray color rather than the black and white. Fitting this board coloring in most builds should be no problem at all. To me, the X299 Tai Chi is a sensible looking motherboard. Nothing crazy going on, nor is there RGB left, right and center. The only RGB on this board radiates from under the chipset heatsink with a subtle glow which complements the board nicely. This can be controlled and adjusted via the ASRock software. A quick rundown on some of the main highlights on this board include triple Ultra M.2 slots supporting both PCIe Gen 3 4x and SATA 3 speeds. One of these will support up to 110mm length M.2 while the other two supporting 80mm long M.2s. 10 SATA 6 gigabit ports, 8 running via the Intel chipset and 2 via the Asmedia 1061 chip. A 13 phase power design featuring premium 60 amp chokes will cover the VRM temps later on in this video. Quad channel DDR4 memory running up to 4400 MHz plus OC. The manual also clearly states which DIMM slots need to be populated for quad and dual channel memory support if you're using 16, 28 or a 44 lane CPU. A total of 128GB of memory can be installed on this board. For PCIe slots we have a total of 4 full length 16x slots supporting both 3-way SLI and 3-way crossfire. Now bear in mind the bandwidth of these slots will be dramatically changed depending on if you install a 16, 28 or 44 lane CPU. This is also very well laid out in the manual on how this is broken down. But for a quick run through with the maximum GPUs you can install, the PCIe slots will run at. 8x, 16x, 8x if running 3 GPUs on a 44 lane CPU, 8x, 8x, 8x if running 3 GPUs on a 28 lane CPU, and 8x, 4x, 4x if running 3 GPUs on a 16 lane CPU. We also have the inclusion of a dual Intel Gigabit LAN and an Intel AC wireless controller as well. If you're looking for 10 gigabit ethernet support, then stay tuned for the ASRock X299 Gaming i9 motherboard, as that will be the board for you. For USB, there's a total of eight USB 3.0 ports, four front with one of these ports being a 90 degree port and four on the rear. Two USB 2.0 on the rear and a USB 3.1 10 gigabit type C and type A on the rear as well. Audio wise, there's an ALC 1220 audio codec installed on this board, which supports DTS Connect and really packs a punch. Some nice features on the rear I.O. is the BIOS flashback button and the clear CMOS button as well. I'd like to make a special shout out to Crucial Memory for supporting all the memory not just for this test bench but for all our test benches. BIOS wise I was really impressed. The BIOS felt smooth and lag free. The first areas I checked out first were the temps to make sure everything was looking good. Next I headed over to set up an M.2 PCIe RAID setup. If you're familiar with the Z270 platform then you feel right at home here. No issues here and my setup took all of a few minutes to complete. As I was sent an i9-7900X, thank you ASRock, I was eager to see how far I could push this beast. The X299 Taichi has a plethora of overclocking parameters in the BIOS. I was really surprised at just how many there were. Basically all I set was the multi, CPU input voltage and CPU vCore. After about 5 minutes of playing around, I was able to get my CPU up and running at 4.7 GHz. I could reach 4.8 GHz stable for gaming, but not stable for Prime 95. One area I really wanted to check out was the VRM temps, as I'm sure you've all seen the recent video covering a few boards on this. In Prime 95 for 10 minutes, the i9-7900X at stock, the top area of the VRM heatsink reached around 53 degrees, while lower, down at the base of this heatsink, reached around 56 degrees C. Not too bad. Now with the CPU running at 4.7 GHz, the top side of the VRMs reached 65 degrees C, while the base reached 70 degrees C. But this would be the worst case scenario, or if you're using your system for rendering. For VRM temps while gaming, our temps were around 50 degrees C at 4.7 GHz while playing PUBG for 30 minutes. So expect even cooler at stock CPU settings. Other nice features include dual RGB headers, Dr. Debug LED, water pump header and the BIOS flashback feature which allows you to restore your BIOS without a CPU or RAM installed. 
All right, so that's the main features of the ASRock X209 Tai Chi board covered there. Um, I just want to cover a few more little things. Uh, price point, we're looking at uh, 499 Australian dollars. Now that puts it pretty much in the bottom half of the X299 price point, which I think is pretty good. Uh, it's a great performing board. Like honestly, I've had this for probably two to three weeks now. I've set it on my test bench and just let it go. I haven't really just uh, got the board, uh, set it up, done the review and dismantled it. I've had mates over, we've had a few LAN, LAN parties going on, we've been playing PUBG and this board has been rock solid. And I've, and I've had the CPU running at 4.7, 4.8 the whole time and it's been running flawless so I was really happy how this ASRock board sort of performs. So for uh, $4.99, I think that is a good price. And you also do get the, ASRock has been doing this for a while now, you get the high band with SLI bridge, so it is only the uh, the two-way, which is pretty much all you need. So it is a nice touch that they do that. I'm not sure how many other uh, brands are giving you these high bandwidth bridges, but it's nice that ASRock uh, do that. Um, another thing, of course, VRM temps were a little hot. Uh, now, one thing I do want to state that on a test bench, it's a very different scenario, me testing this board and other components on a test bench than in a traditional case. Now, I think a downside uh, this time when testing it on a test bench is you've got no real active cooling on your test bench at all. You've got no fans, no nothing. So you're really relying on your ambient temperature. Now, the ambient temperature in my room during my testing was around 19 degrees C. Uh, so I did do a bit of a test where I put a fan up the top that would simulate blowing out of your case. So if you can sort of top fan in your case, that's near your VRMs. Now that will vary depending on your case, whether it's forward a bit or back a bit. And that did drop the temps about 15 degrees on the VRMs. So that is just something to take in note, uh, note right there. So uh, something else I wanna look at is the RGB. ASRock has been doing RGB for a little bit now. They haven't been going too crazy with all that RGB, but their software does work. And as I said, you get a nice subtle glue around the chipset. Now that did work well, that did work uh, and look good. But the only issue I did have with that is the two RGB strip headers. You get one down the bottom and one sort of up the top. They both work together. They aren't independent. So in the software, you can select just both at once and it's the same color. So if you had two different strips or you say had some fans that can use it, you have to have the same color over the two. So it would be nice if you could uh, separate those uh, strips for different colors. Um, another thing was that there were no sort of power buttons. So you didn't get your nice little fancy power switch and your reset switch. Now to me, that's not too much of a big deal, but I think uh, are boards these days, and I do think ASRock are aiming this at sort of a, sort of a higher class range um, at a decent price point, so it would have been nice to see those little buttons down the bottom. They did have the uh, Dr. Debug LED, which is a nice touch, but uh, you can even see they do have the little, uh, the little solder pads for the buttons, but I assume they will be on the gaming i9 board. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on this review. Really happy with this board, really like it. I'm really interested if the at the uh, Gaming i9 coming out with ASRock that does have the 10 gigabit uh, network in there. So I'd like to thank ASRock for sending that as a board to check out. Play around with, I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.